Hi everybody, my name is Johnny Byer. Welcome to the American Banjo Museum and another one of our virtual tours. Today we're going to be taking a look at the American Banjo Museum Hall of Fame. A lot of folks might not realize, but the Hall of Fame existed before the museum ex existed itself. Back in 1998, uh, Oklahoma City, actually Midwest City, attorney Brady Hunt wanted to honor one of his favorite banjo players, a guy named Smokey Montgomery. Smokey was part of the Light Crust Doughboys, one of these great Western swing bands. And he said, why don't we start a Hall of Fame so that we can honor Smokey Montgomery? That was the whole start of everything that you see around us. Uh, later on, industrialist from Il Indiana, Jack Canine, uh, got involved in the picture, and he had another favorite banjo player named C. Sandy Reiner, Clarence Sandy Reiner, and he wanted to induct him in a Hall of Fame as well. So back in 1998, Smokey Montgomery and Clarence C. Sandy Reiner were the first two inductees into the Hall of Fame. Things have changed a lot since then. We should point out, this started out as the National Four String Banjo Hall of Fame and Museum when we first opened back in Guthrie. The thing about it was we were telling the story about the Jazz Age banjos, the tenor and plectrum banjos that were so popular during the Roaring Twenties. There are so many guys who were really into that kind of music that it seemed a natural thing to start a banjo museum based on that kind of music and those kind of instruments. However, as time went by, it became real apparent that a lot of banjo players and people in the banjo world were hoping that we would recognize their favorite banjo players as well. Back about 2012 or 2013, after we had moved to our new museum here in Oklahoma City, uh, we decided that was a good idea. We're going to start to embrace all styles of banjo, all types of banjo playing, and all manner of banjo players all around the world and make sure we recognize the entire banjo world. So in 2014, with the induction of Earl Scruggs as our first five-string banjo player, the American Banjo Museum Hall of Fame as we know it today was started. It's been an amazing run, keeping in mind that we started with 71 four-string banjo player uh, only. I mean, they were exclusive to the four-string banjo players. So until 2014, it was all about the four-string banjo players. And to be fair, we honored a lot of people whose life's accomplishments might have been forgotten had we not had this Hall of Fame in place to honor them. Since 2014, we've been honoring uh, bluegrass players, uh, historical figures such as Joel Walker Sweeney, a uh, banjo ukulele player like uh, George Formby, and all style of banjo. It's really been an amazing transformation of the American Banjo Museum taking its spot in making sure that banjo players of all styles are recognized all around the world. Let's take a little walk through the museum here, or through the Hall of Fame. You know, if you walk over here, you can see right where we started. Smokey Montgomery and C. Sandy Reiner. Among the four-string banjo world, those are two beloved names. And if you're a four-string banjo aficionado, in this first wall, or as we go through the Hall of Fame, you're gonna see a lot of your favorite people. Eddie Peabody, Harry Reeser, Don Van Paul, to Perry Bechtel. One of my favorite inductions, we put in Shaky Johnson, Sherwood Johnson, who started the Shaky's Pizza Parlors that gave so many of us our start in the music business. And of course, of course, it, you just, it goes down the list. Buddy Walker, Roy Smith, Mel Bay, the guy who taught the world how to play. Our founder, Jack Canine. Frank Rossi, editor of the Resonator and a great promoter of the banjo all along. Down here, Tim Allen, one of the guys we still see and love everywhere he goes. He's a great banjo player. Our dear friend, Lowell Schreier. The Jubilee Banjo Band. Johnny St. Cyr, the first African-American to be inducted into our Hall of Fame and a great, great part of early jazz history. It goes down the list. Kathy Riley, Scotty Plummer, C.C. Richelieu, Ralph Martin, Charlie Tagawa, Freddie Morgan, Al Smith, Bacon and Dave, Fred Mickey Finn, Charles McNeil, Doug Maddox, Mike Pingator. Tell you what, look at this. Mike, Michael Pingator right here, he was a player with the Paul Whiteman Orchestra, the king of jazz. Back when they introduced George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue, it was Mike Pingator who was playing the banjo. Follow me, Lucas. 
There's the banjo. There's Mike Pingator's banjo right here in the American Banjo Museum Hall of Fame. We are so, so delighted to have so many treasures like this. And if you visit the museum, you'll really get a chance to take a close look and get up and close and personal with some of these uh, banjo players from our Hall of Fame. Uh, all the instruments in the Hall of Fame, I should point out, are associated with Hall of Fame members. This is Scotty Plummer's Richelieu banjo that was custom made for him by Richelieu and uh, seen with Scotty when he appeared in Las Vegas and so many of the great uh, television shows towards the later end of his life. Uh, a beautiful Bacon and Day banjo here. These are a couple of our, uh, how should we say, manufacturing honorees. Bacon and Day or the Bacon Banjo Company and then one from um, um, Dale Small of Alba, Missouri. Uh, wonderful art banjos that Dale made. I'm gonna sneak in behind you here. Again, we go through the, the whole list. I wish I could name them all, but you know, we'll, we'll point them. Yeah, we'll name them all, what the heck. Doug Maddox, Mike Pingator, Joel Schiavone from Your Father's Mustache, Renee Carnes, Buddy Griffin, Cynthia Sayer, Pat Terry Sr., our beloved, dearly departed, Eddie Davis, the Gibson Company, and then we have uh, Walter K. Bauer, who a lot of folks don't know, but he had such great teaching material back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. Georgette Twain, John Kelly, Walt Disney, who gave so many banjo players so much work because he loved the banjo. The Paramount Company, Don Van Polter, a two-time inductee, once for education and instruction, also for performance. Jad Paul, who was in a part of the Spike Jones band. You would remember him with Eddie, Eddie, or how should I say, uh, Freddie Morgan. Maurice Bollier, Canada's king of the banjo. Jack Dupan and Harry Higgins from the Red Garter. Dale Small was inducted for promotion. Don Stevenson, one of our friends for education. Big John Becker, the king of the banjo from St. Louis. Everyone's friend and favorite, Buck Kelly. We have Myron, Myron Hinkle here. I was gonna say Myron Cohen. I don't know where that was coming from. Henry Lee, who taught Renee Carnes how to do all her magical work. Dave Fry and Mr. Smooth on the plectrum banjo, Dave Marty. Helen Baker, one of the women of the banjo who really took the banjo to great places back in the 20s all the way through the rest of her life. Mr. Bill Pinkham. Uh, Chuck Ogsbury from the Ohm Company, and Jim Riley. Now, we can pick the whole thing up back over here when uh, we catch up with uh, 2014 and uh, Earl Scruggs induction. Actually, we only got up to 2011 on the other side of the street, but Greg Allen, uh, again, a beloved performer. Gene Sheldon, everyone remembers him and his not only great banjo playing, but his comic uh, manner of playing the banjo. Mr. Horace Ward, the Vega Company, Daryl Whiting, uh, uh, again, another educator who kept us all, all going in so much uh, information about the Vega Company and, and, and what a wonderful guy he was. Uh, here we got Mike Gentry, Eddie Connors, something Smith and the Redheads, uh, who could forget? Everybody sing! <laughs> Wayne Fairchild, Steve Caddick, again, Eddie Davis, a two-time inductee, once for promotion and once for performance. Pete Seeger, the guy who had this folk uh, vibe about him and got everybody to sing along and made the popular, uh, the banjo so popular in the mainstream. Of course, uh, our friend and supporter, uh, Steve Martin uh, gave us uh, the banjo he got when he received the Mark Twain Award. That's on display here at the museum. Albert Grover, who while um, and the name was never on a peg head of a banjo, virtually every banjo made in the 1920s and 30s and even up to this day has parts made by the Grover Company on it. Tim Allen, another two-time inductee for performance and education. Paul Erickson from La Crosse, Wisconsin. John McEwen, Roy Clark. Joel Walker Sweeney, Tony Trishka. Now you're starting to see we are recognizing all these different styles of banjos. Folk banjo, bluegrass banjo, old time, uh, historical figures. That's the direction the Hall of Fame is moving. Uh, continued into 2012, Mr. Lee Floyd, Skip Duvall, Glenn Parks, Jim Farquhar, Buddy Walker, two-time inductee, once for education and instruction and performance. Our dear friend, Little Debbie, Debbie Schreier, Elmer Snowden, great, great jazz banjo player. The Kingston Trio, how many people can think of a banjo without thinking of the Kingston Trio? David Day, the genius behind the Vega Company, the Bacon and Bacon Banjo Company. What, what an amazing mind he was and his effect is felt all over this museum. Mike Correo, and we go down and Pat Terry, the first son and father of Pat Terry Jr. in the Hall of Fame. His father is a member of the Hall of Fame and so is Pat Jr. 
Uh, oh, who can they? J.D. Crow. That's the man. What a, what an amazing player. George Formby. Uh, everybody loves George Formby. It's just that banjo uke, the way he played it. The Deering Company and the wonderful family they have. Alfred Greathouse. And, of course, then we go into 2018, Mr. Bela Fleck. And, uh, again, the man who means banjo to a current generation, to many, many people. And, of course, Borgie Borgeson just recently passed away, but what a legacy he leaves behind. Jim Henson, Muppet creator, had uh, Kermit the Frog and the banjo throughout his career in many productions. Eddie Collins, a uh, wonderful tenor banjo player. And, of course, uh, the banjo newsletter uh, was uh, uh, and, and remains a huge piece of education and literature for the banjo world. Those are all honorees, including some of our m more recent honorees we should, uh, we should point out over here. Uh, if we haven't seen them, Allison Brown. What a, what a wonderful treat it is to have Allison in our Hall of Fame and her wonderful addition to the musicality of the banjo and that feminine side that uh, she is she is such a delightful person to be around. You can't help but love the banjo and love Allison when you get around her. Janet Davis taught so many people how to play the banjo. Jimmy Mazzy, the guy from uh, the Northeast who is the most beloved jazz player I think I've ever seen and takes uh, humbleness to a new level. He's amazingly humble as uh, when a great musician should be a little bit strutting. You'll never see it from Jimmy Mazzy. Bob Snow, the guy who started Rosie O'Grady's. Uh, so many banjo players throughout the years had their start and a great, great place to continue their, their art at Rosie O'Grady's throughout the years. John Hartford, of course, everyone remembers from uh, uh, the Glen Campbell Good Time Hour and all the wonderful things he did to bring the banjo gentle on my mind. He created an anthem. What, what a wonderful legacy he leaves behind. And then one of my favorites. Uh, we won't talk too much about this guy, but the Hall of Fame has been something that has carried on banjo legacy throughout its existence and we're just getting started. I know there's a lot of names that some of you would like to see on those walls. And you can do that uh, if you're a member of the museum. You can uh, send in your suggestions for the Hall of Fame. If you're a lifetime member of the Museum Association, you actually get to vote in the Hall of Fame. So if you have somebody special that you would like to see in the Hall of Fame, keep in mind the process is up to you. And if you have somebody that should be in the Hall of Fame and you think should be in the Hall of Fame, please become a member of our association and you can submit those names for consideration. We have a long way to go because there's a lot of banjo players who whose names and pictures should be on these walls. Also, again, if you're a, a fa fan of the museum, we'd like to thank you. Thank you for your donations. Throughout this uh, COVID-19 thing we've all been working through, we've been doing these daytime programmings, hopefully giving you your banjo fix on a daily basis. I hope that's worth something to you. If it is, send in a little donation. If nothing else, send in a thank you note that says, hey, we appreciate what you're doing because we love being here and sharing these noontime shows with you. So for right now, thanks for joining us on these virtual noontime programs. I want to point out, I hope you've enjoyed visiting the Hall of Fame as it is right now, but it's going to be changing a little bit as we get into the upcoming year. We have five new inductees into the American Banjo Museum Hall of Fame. Right now, we are scheduled to do those inductions on the weekend of September 7th, 8th, and 9th. Now, we're not sure if we're going to have to push those dates back, so please stay tuned for the most up-to-date up information. But we want you to be on hand because we've got a great slate of inductees coming in. We're going to be inducting our friend Gary Biscuit Davis, who is a great five-string player. On the four-string side of things, Fast Eddie Erickson from California. We're going to be honoring a longtime favorite in the banjo world, Mr. Roger Sprung, and then one of the guys who created a whole new style of banjo playing, John Reno will be uh, honored, as well as a manufacturer who created a whole new way to make banjos, Mr. Jeff Stelling. So please watch for the dates and join us as we honor the 2020 class of the American Banjo Museum Hall of Fame. For right now, thanks for joining us again. My name is Johnny Beyer on behalf of the American Banjo Museum. Bye-bye for now. Thank you. <laughs>
right here in Oklahoma City. All kinds of banjo legends are here, from our board of directors to relatives of the great Earl Scruggs, as well as the Kingston Trio with founding member Bob Shane. It's going to be an amazing night, great awards, and uh, executive director Johnny Byer has put together quite a program. Enjoy the fifth annual American Banjo Museum Hall of Fame. This is going to be a really exciting night tonight. Oh, cool. Hey, you got to get a shot of that. What is your title of board of directors? Are you the chairman of the board? I am the chairman of the board. Uh, so you're the master of the banjos. You're the gatekeeper, the key master of all of the uh, banjos. I'm the one who holds all the picks. Uh -huh. Teresa's dad was a banjo player. Really? And we're here to acknowledge him. That's why we do this. I'm here with board of directors John. How do I say your last name? Wildman. Because he is one. I'm here with Johnny Byer, executive director of the American Banjo Museum. Johnny, what's it like celebrating the fifth uh, Banjo Hall of Fame here in Bricktown. This is just a great night. Everyone's in great spirits. It's like banjo, how the banjo makes you feel without actually playing it. Everyone's just, it's a, a like a class reunion. We're having a great time. We have a great lineup tonight. We got the Kingston Trio all playing banjo. We got Earl Scruggs with Jim Mills playing. We got Mike Carrero from Florida, Debbie Schreier from Upper Lord. It, it just doesn't get any better. Some of the, the notable people that you've played with? Well, uh, okay, I, I played uh, several jobs with Elvis when he first got out of the Army. His first oh, that Elvis? Yes. Elvis the, Presley. Elvis Whoa! Presley, right? <laughs> I'm here with Jim Mills. Jim, what's it like to come here tonight to be playing um, in honor of Earl Scruggs? It's a, it's a big honor. Earl is my all time musical hero. Just to get to be around folks like that are it's amazing. And it's a wonderful adventure having here. It's unbelievable to me. This many people show up dressed up for banjo. I'm so happy to see it. Does it feel right? I mean, is banjo attire this? It feels right. I, All right. I, I, I like to do more of it. All right. <laughs> I was inducted in 2006, okay. and I'm accepting the award tonight for a fellow that's passed away that's dead many years. He was perhaps the greatest jazz banjo, banjo player of all time. You play in Woody Allen's band, or let me say, Woody Allen plays in your band? Well... Can you clear this up for me? We're in Manhattan, New York City, uh -huh. and when we do that, it's it's called Eddie, Eddie Davis's New Orleans Jazz Band with Woody Allen. Okay. But when we tour Europe, the promoters want it to be Woody Allen's Jazz Band with Eddie Davis Musical Band. Oh. <laughs> so it gets a bit twisted. Is that okay, though, to be a music director? I kind of like that better. All right. Here with Emily Epley, uh, the director of the Earl Scruggs Center. What do you think about being here for the fifth annual American Banjo Museum Awards here in Oklahoma City? It's very exciting. We had not been out before, but some of the folks from their board attended our grand opening in January, okay. and we were very thrilled to be a part of this. Well, what's it like seeing uh, Earl getting inducted into the Hall of Fame tonight? Oh, it's just, it's just another great piece of history with him, and oh. just another way that I see for his legacy to be, uh, you know, taken care of. We wanted to honor the pioneers. We wanted to honor the people that kept the music going, and tonight we're doing both of those things with cool. especially Bob Shane. It's great to have him here. It's almost historic in proportion. <laughs> Wonderful. It's a very big honor for us. We decided to come because the Kingston Trio was getting inducted. And then when they found out we were coming, they asked me to accept the, uh, the award for David Day. And we were delighted to hear Earl Scruggs was being inducted. That was wonderful. So it's like an incredible oh, evening. Your dad's uh, legacy and the way that he changed the instrument so much, what's it like to see him getting inducted tonight into the uh, Hall of Fame? Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, you know, the influence that he had over two players, and not just musicians, but just people throughout the world. Uh, and it becomes, to me, even more evident every, every day in my life. What do, what do you think yes. of the American Badger Museum? Oh, it's fantastic. We didn't really know what to expect. We had heard great things about it, and we knew there were many different types of banjos. And until you actually see them, and you see the beauty of the visual art, as well as knowing the art that comes out of them when they're played by a person who's got that talent, it's a wonderful place to go. I got to tour the, uh, the Banjo Museum today, and it's fantastic. You know, I'm not sure I have words for it. It was really nice. We enjoyed the heck out of it. This has ever been as good as any museum in New York City. Very good. I think it ought to move to New York City. Well, can we oh, just no, move no. here? <laughs> I'm here with Joel Chavoni, founder of Your Father's Mustache. Joel, what's it like to be uh, seeing your father's mustache reignited here at the Banjo Museum in Oklahoma City? Kind of like a bad dream. <laughs> so there's a lot of tenor and four-string players here tonight. Do you feel outnumbered? 
A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> do, do you get the pressure? Do you get pressure? I'm hoping they'll like the five string after a while. Really they always tell me when I have mine out, they're like, we can pull that fifth one off really easily. <laughs> they go around with uh, with clippers. <laughs> Hi, Woody. <laughs> can you get me in one of his movies? Maybe. All right. I'll get you an audition, that's for sure. I got a manager here. <laughs> Thank you for what you've done for the banjo itself, the American Banjo Museum, and for the state of Oklahoma. Hey, thanks. We're glad to be here, and glad everyone loves the banjo. All right. Hi. I'm here with John McEwen. I'm here with Richard Berger. I'm here with Frank Hamilton. I'm here with Eddie Davis. Jens Kruger. If I'm correct, this might be the second time you've been inducted. How does this work, Tim? Uh, I'm pretty honored. And you've yes. already been inducted into the Hall of Fame. Now, how many of these can you get? <laughs> I was just a, a little confused. I'm not an inductee. Well, see, I'm just trying to get you in. If I say it, then maybe they'll just let you keep a trophy. <laughs> I was uh, inducted in 2002 for performance, and uh, that's always fun. You know, people think of the performance, but they uh, don't always know that people may be promoting or educating, and I'm and being inducted uh, for education. Our company, the Grover Musical Products Company, is being honored, but actually it's A.D. Grover, the founder of the company, that um, is being inducted in the Hall of Fame. Well, I was just talking to Tim Allen out there. He's inducted tonight for, right. for teaching, and he was in before, too. So there's three of us that's in here. He and I and Buddy Walker are in okay. twice. So uh, I guess, I don't know, can we get another one? Sure, I'd say get as many as you can. Who do I talk to about uh, this? If, if Steve doesn't show up, just take his too. <laughs> right, right. I didn't say that, Steve. <laughs> what got you into the banjo originally? Well, originally, I'll have to be very uh, candid with you. It was one gentleman in particular. His name is Pete Seeger, and I am so honored because I'm here tonight to an accept an award for Pete Seeger. Uh, Jens, what got you into playing banjo? Well, actually an album. You know, when I was a kid, I, I listened to uh, my father. He had some albums. And there was something about the sound of the banjo that, that, that seemed like it was a world where I wanted to be in. The Dillards. And they walked on stage and Doug Dillard took off on Hickory Hollow. And I just went. <laughs> Who are you here on behalf of tonight? Actually, my good friend Steve Martin. Oh, very good. I've heard of him, and he plays the banjo some. Yeah, he's funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, Steve is, is getting in, inducted to the Banjo Music Hall of Fame, and I'm very proud that he asked me, you know, and, and Johnny Byer, they asked me if I would come out and receive the award on his behalf. Well, well, do you get to keep it if uh, you accept it? No, I don't. No, unfortunately see, not. Let's see no. if we can, like, sharpie your name on there. No, 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 I no. wouldn't do that. <laughs> what do you think of the museum altogether? Oh, it's beautiful, and, and I know it changes. Now, Johnny Byer is the executive director of it, and he's made various movies, little films to describe the history and uh, different performers, and it's beautiful instruments that are taken care of. It was fabulous. I didn't know what to expect. Um, I've seen some vintage guitars, but frankly, not a lot of vintage banjos, and I knew a lot of the names and learned a little bit of history, and they, they were phenomenal. The museum is a marvelous array. It's a, it's a remarkable collection. It's done very well, where you can take in each banjo and you can assimilate it as you look at it. It's done in such a tasteful way. I'd just like to say that, for those that don't know, the American Banjo Museum is not just about banjos. It's about the incredible array of people that have played the banjos over the years. All different styles, different types of music, it's about the heart of America, actually, and the artwork. The banjos are made by people, and it's one true American instrument that reflects the culture, the people, and a lot of styles of music, not just bluegrass or Dixieland, old-timey. It's the heart of America on display at the American Banjo Museum. Welcome to what is going to be the most awkward evening of my life. <laughs> Kid in the candy 
是吧？<笑><笑>